Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday from our knees. Happy birthday to you. Welcome to our Arnie's birthday Zoom. Uh, former Boilermaker player and broadcaster that needs no introduction is turning uh, 76 years young today. And a happy birthday to Ralph Taylor. Spent 15 years on the Purdue uh, radio crew. Had a uh, has been to the Final Four as a Boilermaker. Of course, played for Purdue in in the days of uh, uh, Herman Gilliam and Ralph Taylor and Rick Mount and Billy Keller. And uh, that uh, uh, will reflect on some of that. First of all. It's it's a it's a birthday. All birthdays are good, as they always say. Ralphie, look back at your your life. Uh, has you have you had traditions on your birthday that you've always celebrated, or things that you'll be doing today? I always ask that question, but it's always interesting to hear what people have done throughout the course of their lives. Uh, generally, I just kind of go with the flow with whatever surprises I get from siblings <laughs> and others, and uh, yeah. that's always been a lot of fun. Like uh, today, I plan to go to an art exhibit at a uh, middle school. Yeah. So that'd be it. And then I'm doing this interview with you. That's the first time uh, that's happened on a birthday. Yeah. And uh, my sister has told me that she has a rum cake waiting for me ah. to celebrate the birthday. And last night when I with some uh, friends to uh, Benihana's and yeah. a very nice dinner there. So it's just whatever, whatever happens, happens. I'm good. Yeah, that's a good thing. And you're obviously been a, a civic leader in, in the city of Indianapolis and all the things that you've done throughout your professional career there. What? Tell me a little bit about the the the, the, the art exhibit or what you're going to today. That seems interesting to me. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, an exhibit on uh, Black history yeah. in uh, Indianapolis. So I'm looking forward to uh, see that and uh, should should be interesting. And uh, I think uh, next week, I think, yeah, next week, uh, the Asian American Alliance, they're having a uh, civic engagement on uh, kind of historical uh, perspective on the Riviera Club in Indianapolis, which yeah. had kind of a non-inclusive policy. Yeah. So there's going to be a little history lesson on that. So uh, I like staying involved and keeping up to date on what's going on in and around Indianapolis. Well, another thing you like to do is watch Purdue basketball and, and college basketball. And Absolutely. Huge weekend this weekend. Unfortunately for Purdue, uh, the Boilermakers are not part of it. They'll be a, you have been part of it in 1969 in Louisville in the Final Four uh, with Purdue beat North Carolina in the national semifinal and, and uh, were defeated by UCLA. But talk about, let's t- first talk about this. You've, you've already done some research and we've talked a little bit offline about three-point shooting. You've watched, uh, I assume, a fair amount of this tournament. There are four, you know, it's the first time in history, I believe, that they have, the, the, and they've only had one seed in the top four. And uh, it's going to be a very interesting final when you look at uh, uh, teams that are not household names, Florida Atlantic, San Diego State, uh, certainly even Miami and basketball hasn't been that way. But talk about what you see uh, out of this uh, final four this week and what are you expecting to see? Connecticut's playing very well. I'm sure you'll hit on that as well. Well, I think uh, Florida Atlantic, most definitely, they are the surprise group, kind of like uh, George Mason and other uh, under, underdogs in, in the past few years who happened to show up during the Big Ten tournament. I think uh, they have a solid ball club, good offense. I think the hottest team right now is uh, UConn. Yeah. And yeah. UConn, they've gotten hot. They lost eight games. And one of those losses was to Butler. And for yeah. those following college basketball, Butler just had really a disastrous season. But if Butler beat UConn, it kind of talks about the parity this season of college basketball. And then I look at Miami and Miami – uh, with their guards, uh, they're really tough to guard because not only can they shoot the three, but they're also very capable and very good at penetrating to the basket, either getting to the rim for a layup or dishing out to the open man. So I think it's going to be wide open. And, of course, San Diego State, those are grown men. I think, I don't know, they probably average about 30 years of age. You know, just <laughs> probably about 23. But, yeah. you know, those, those guys, uh, their defense is suffocating. Yeah, and it their defense kind of reminds me of uh, Duke's uh, defense. Yeah. I remember when Duke came to play for doing the ACC Challenge. Yeah, back in two thousand eight. Uh-huh. Right. I mean, at that time, our defense was excellent, and I thought, boy, this is going to be a big matchup. Well, Duke's defense was almost twice as good as our defense, and yeah. we played excellent defense. Yeah. So San Diego State's 
defense kind of reminds me of the Duke team from 2008. Well, you had a, in your playing career one of the all-time fan favorites and yet uh, had had the experience of winning a Big Ten championship, winning it by, I believe, three games also, right? You guys finished 13 yeah, three games. Ohio, Ohio State was 10-4 and four that year, as I recall. Right. Um, you've also been to the Final Four, all places that uh, Purdue wants to get there. But talk about reflecting on that experience. I mean, you obviously had a very unique uh, team uh, with great offensive abilities and Herman Gilliam and and Rick Mount and, of course, uh, Billy Keller. But uh, you talk about that uh, experience and and looking at that uh, through the lens of a a few decades and that experience of playing in that national championship game as well. I think it was just uh, unreal setting because, you know, we started out the season and one of our first road games was to UCLA. Yeah. And we lose by 12, and little did we know we'd wind up meeting them in the uh, final game of the NCAA tournament. And I think also during this time, Alan, Purdue really was kind of like a football football yeah. school. Yeah. And my fraternity brother and great classmate, Leroy Keyes, you know, he was yeah. uh, part of that uh, Purdue being the great football school because he's an outstanding football player. We had great football teams. And uh, so the 68-69 team, we kind of – Stole some of the attention away, and gradually the momentum of that season kept building. Fans became galvanized. And of course, uh, we were in Mackey Arena, and those uh, famous uh, Purdue fans at Mackey Arena, you know, they were loud and boisterous. People think it was loud now. It was even louder back then or just as loud. Then. Yeah. And I think uh, we kept rolling, and uh, we finished 13-1. and one. Our yeah. only loss was to Ohio State at Columbus, 88-85. to Yeah. And I can remember uh, we beat our on the road. And usually we come back from a road game and we might have our closest friends, our roommate picks up at the airport to meet us. So we come back from the hour game and we're laying at the airport and we look out and we see these people, all these people, well, probably close to maybe 500 to 800 people at the airport. And we're trying to figure out what happened at the airport. And we get off the plane. They were all there to greet us because yeah. – all at once, the fans that started clamoring what we were doing. And that led, uh, you know, to a great uh, Big Ten season, undefeated at home. Then we get to the NCAA tournament, which at that time was only like two weeks. Yeah. And, of course, you only took the uh, champions of a conference to play. And we met uh, – we beat Miami over Ohio. Then we beat uh, uh, Marquette. Marquette on last-second jump shot by Rick. Then we advanced to the Final Four, which seems uh, kind of ridiculous nowadays. So yeah. we go to the Final Four after one week, and we beat a great North Carolina team led by uh, Charlie Scott, current uh, big, or the former Big Ten commissioner. Jim, Jim Delaney was the one of the guards on that team. And we're getting all the trash talk from the Carolina fans about what they were going to do to us. And we killed them by almost 20. And we meet UCLA in the championship game. And unfortunately for us in the Marquette game, Chuck Davis had suffered a uh, broken collarbone or broken shoulder, yeah. was, un- was unable to play. So, uh, you know, we get beat by 20. Uh, Lou Alcindor, who is now Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, goes off for 37 points, 20 rebounds. We have our uh, worst shooting night of the season. Uh, we shot like uh, 29% yeah. and uh, – Billy and well, our big three basically had their worst shooting of the entire season. And we wind up uh, shooting only 29.3%. So I can commiserate with our team this year that also <laughs> struggled shooting. And those things just happen. But I think uh, we had a great season. Camaraderie all season long was great. We had three outstanding players in uh, Billy, Herman, and Rick. And everybody got along real well. A lot of us still keep in touch today. But I think. Getting to the final four, I see uh, at some point uh, Matt's going to get us there. I, I remember a lot in high school. We would always get beat in the sectional for whatever reason. And we always thought, boy, if we just get out of the sectional, we can do it all. Sure enough, my senior year, we get out of the sectional going to win the state. And I think eventually Purdue is going to get to the final four. And I'm going to say within the next four years, we're going to be in the final four. All right. I think here, I think there's a lot to, a lot of pretty fans that, uh, Hope you're right, and and there's certainly a lot of reason to believe that. And in, in that NCAA tournament is a is a challenge. And you look at this team, 
and what it did accomplish this year. You know, we, we've talked about the three-point shooting and Purdue struggles doing that. Uh, uh, though Matt Painter talked a lot during the course of the season about you know, his confidence in those guys. It just didn't didn't bear out, especially in the in the NCAA tournament. But talk about that shooter's mentality and 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 also the relative youth. I mean, Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, well documented freshman. You're playing. You mentioned too that. San Diego State's got got some really older guys. A lot a lot of these teams have, have guys that are 22, 23 years old. Right. Uh, bodes well for the future, but there's a lot to learn as a college basketball player as you migrate your and, and traverse the freshman, sophomore, junior years of your time. I think uh, our two freshman guards, Logan and Smith, they start the season out great. And I think uh, – Eventually, the lack of experience kind of caught up to us at the end, and I think uh, they can only get better as they uh, continue to grow and develop. And I think uh, Zach Eady, he he reminded me a lot of watching uh, Lou Alcindor play when yeah. he was at UCLA. Just totally destroyed teams, and teams always had to figure out how to guard him. And I think uh, Zach, if he hopefully stays another year, be just as overwhelming as he was this year because there's just no matchups for him. <clears throat> and I think the key for our, uh, I mean, this is just me speaking. Yeah. I did, I know, coach, I did coach now for three years once I graduated from Purdue. Well, and I you think, spent 15 years on the, I, as an analyst too with Matt Painter and Kevin, but go right ahead. Yeah, You're quite I'll, I'll just say this about <laughs> our three point shooters. Yeah. <clears throat> we had uh, in the past, the three point shooters I remember most were Dakota Mathias. Yeah. Carson Edwards, Ryan Klein, and yeah. Stefanovic. Yeah. One of the key things about those guys, especially Stefanovic, Matthias, and uh, Klein, when they first came to Purdue, they basically just sat behind a three point line and would shoot threes. Sometimes they were on, sometimes they were off, but when the defense really played them tight, they struggled. What they did as they continued to develop and grow at Purdue by the time they were juniors or seniors, they learned that I'm a ball fake three, but then I'm going to step in for the mid-range jumper or drive to the basket. And that was a marked improvement in their three-point shooting because the defense had to play them honestly. Yeah. And Carson Evers was a completely different animal. He yeah. could either shoot the three, take you off the dribble, shoot the mid-range jump shot, or take you off the dribble, go in for a layup, or fourth, take you off the dribble, penetrate and dish. So yeah. I think when a three-point shooters do more than just stand behind a three-point line, but look at films of Klein, Matthias, uh, Stefanovic, and Edwards, they can only get better. Yeah. They, one thing about those guys is, uh, as it was with your group too, they're basketball junkies. They love to play and uh, you have to think that uh, improvement will be part of that story in terms of that. You, know, you mentioned Zach Eady and his, uh, and he'll be, and he's already won one national player of the year award this week. He will likely win another, but talk about also just, you know, the, this is a team that like you guys in 1969 had very cohesive units, had some disappointment uh, and and now has to move forward uh, with the fact that uh, you maybe you, you had a great year, but you didn't do what you wanted in the big 10 tournament. Talk about the, the psyche of that and what to, if you were, if you were going to give a uh, talk to this team in the off season, what would you tell them? I think uh, first I'd tell them that next season uh, you're going to have a target on your back every single game because you will be the hunted. Yeah. This season we started out as well, Nobody expected anything, and we could just go in and play, and there were no expectations. Well, season one, expectations grew. We were ranked, you know, number one for a number of weeks. And I think there's a different mindset between the hunted and the hunter. And I think uh, these guys next year, I think, will realize even more so that we're going to be the hunted. We're going to have a target on our back every game. We'll be the number one game for every team we play. So we got to bring it every single game and understand the pressure that comes with that. And I think if we realize the pressure coming with each and every game and we just take it as an opportunity to show how great we are, stay together, play well together, I think we should be okay. But again, I think it's realizing we are going to be the hunted. Yeah. And I think two years ago, we also were the hunted and that pressure kind of got to us. But I think this group, they galvanize, stay together. I think they will accept the challenge and keeping in mind that, you know, uh, fickle fans only realize what you did in 
the NCAA tournament. And I think if we, you know, should we win the Big Ten championship, that's fine. But as a group, we need to realize that once again, how will we handle the pressure of getting past the first and second and third rounds in the NCAA tournament? Because the expectations are really going to be overwhelming with everybody, I think, with the exception of Jenkins coming back. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's going to be a storyline that Purdue's going to have to follow. Okay, Indianapolis basketball. Last question, man. And I'll let you get on to your birthday celebration. Thank but <laughs> the uh, the Indianapolis the city of Indianapolis basketball over the years, of course, you and Billy Keller both came from Indianapolis Washington High School, nineteen sixty five. Uh, big or Big Ten, Indiana State champions, but it's been a great tradition of of players from that city. Purdue will be getting another one in Miles Colvin uh, upcoming. Uh, just talk about that. You've lived in that city a long time. Just the evolution, not just why it has become really one of the, uh, and maybe it always has been uh, one of the great cities for for basketball in the in the country in terms of talent and emphasis and and guys that go on. You know, we've got uh, Nigel Pack. Of course, Purdue fans lament that he wasn't at Purdue, but he's in the Final Four this weekend as well for Miami. Talk about that and how how you've seen that develop over the years. I think there are a lot of great coaches in Marion County. Of course, there are a lot of schools, so. Yeah. You always have to bring your best game because it's not like you're going to be playing a lot of cupcakes. And yeah. I think uh, with the tradition that a lot of the schools have now established, <clears throat> especially when you look at Ben Davis, yeah, uh, we used to call them Washington West because yeah. when they started busing, they stole all the players that should have been going to Washington. They won a lot yeah. of state championship with players that should have been going to Washington. But I think the coaches, the uh, the uh, constant uh, AAU games, yeah. I got a different take on AAU, but that's another story. <laughs> but I think the uh, just the competitive spirit of so many guys and just the uh, great coaches that we have here in Marion County has all, has always been part of the tradition. And if I go back to the 50s with uh, Ray Crow at Attics, Charlie Moss at Tech, yeah. uh, Cleon Reynolds at Shaw Ridge, Bill Frolinger at Cathedral, you've always had great teams. And, uh, and the drawback was that, in the 50s and 60s, well, especially in the 50s, he had a lot of great teams, but the only team folks remember in Indianapolis was Chris Saddocks. Yeah. Getting the uh, great uh, Charridge, Tech, Washington, and Van Arzell Twins at Manuel. So I think it's just a rich tradition with a lot of schools, a lot of great players and guys playing year-round, and they have no fear because like kids in a lot of states with AAU circuit, you're playing against guys all the time, and you, you really have no fear of who you're going up against. Yeah, I think that is a true statement, and uh, there are there are some uh, uh, just a terrific talent, and it continues to be something to really watch in that city. All right, well, you have a great birthday. We appreciate so much your time. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in Mackey Arena next year, I'm sure, uh, for the 2023-24 season. Uh, a lot to look forward to from that standpoint. But have a great rest of the day, Ralph. Thanks to Arnie's for sponsoring it, and uh, hope you uh, – Get to do some of that, that rum cake is is as good as advertised. It sounds like okay. It. And I heard you were sending me $150 for this interview for my birthday. I, I look forward to check in the mail. The check will be in the mail. Uh, you know what we'll do? I'm gonna say I what I what I will do, I will do, Ralph, is send you Arnie's uh, from Arnie's a special birthday because you can use that in, in Indianapolis. They've got a couple locations as well. And uh, we'll celebrate uh, celebrate with you on that front. But, hey, thanks so much, Ralph. Okay. You're welcome, Alan. Thank you.